hi ladies how are you oh my goodness it's been such a long time since i came here and talked to you i think the last time i was here was back in june when we were talking about international students so it's great to be back i hope you are doing well welcome back to all of you who are returning to university and welcome 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 to all of you who are freshmen i hope school is starting up well and that you're doing fine and all is going smoothly um, the month of September, I like to talk about school. I like to talk about academics because, you know, it's the returning of school. Um, however, um, in August, when we were working on, uh, when we were doing the web series, I was writing, um, because normally August is for end times and then September I like to focus on school. But I was writing articles for end times in August because I felt we were going to do sister's corner but then with the timing of the web series we ended up just doing the web series and then i was thinking well you know why do the end times again so uh that being said i wanted to shift everything that i was working on for the month of august in the month of september so we're going to be talking about end times in september some people get scared when you talk about end times, the apocalypse, revelation, the rapture, and it's like, oh no, don't, you know, don't talk about it, it's scary, you know, I don't want to think about it. But I think that as children of God, if we are walking blamelessly before the Lord, it should not be something scary or something that we have to dread. Um, the passage I think about is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, if you look at verse 2 and 4, it says, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. So if we are walking blamelessly by the power of the Holy Spirit before the Lord, we should not be scared that, oh my goodness, we're talking about end times and we're talking about the apocalypse. Um, it's just like a worker if you work in an office and you work if you work well and you do your job consistently you shouldn't be afraid you know at what time the boss is gonna come back to the office uh, you shouldn't you know you should continue to do your work because you know regardless of the time that the boss comes back to the office you know he's gonna find you there just doing your work not worrying about anything the people that get scared are the people that are slacking you know work they are misbehaving and then these those are the people that are always like oh is the boss back yet is he back yet because they're afraid because of what they're currently doing is not right so I think when we talk Talk about end times it should not scare us if we're walking blamelessly before the Lord but on the other hand it should also be a wake-up call if there are th those among us who are you know still clinging clinging to this world and it's a wake-up call to say hey it's this world is not our home it's not all that stop you know caring about the things of the world stop you know behaving like the people of the world you need to wake up because Christ is coming soon now usually when people talk about the end times um, they talk about the apocalypse time they say oh Jesus is coming soon because you know uh, we have heard of wars uh, we've seen that you know people are rebelling against their parents so many things are happening to the left to the right the earthquakes and whatnot so this is a great sign of the end times which you know is true because the Bible says so um, but today I want to talk about a uh, uh, one aspect or one particular point that people don't really mention when they talk about the end times and that's saying thank you now you would be like what saying thank you but I'm not making this up the Bible itself says that we're gonna go to 2nd Timothy chapter 3 we're gonna read verse 1 to 2 so Paul is talking to Timothy and he's saying this but know this that in the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Why would Paul even mention the unthankful part? So what if people are not saying thank you when you open the door for them? So what if people, you know, are not thankful when you give them a gift? It's no big deal. But it's so interesting that Paul is saying that in the last days, 
what people will become is unthankful. And before I go any further, here Paul is not talking about the world that's going to be unthankful. And even if you see the description that is given here, when he says that in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, he's not talking about the world. Because the world has always loved money. The world has always been proud. The world has always been um, blasphemers. The world has always been unholy. So this is not something that is he's not talking about the world because the world has always been like that but he's talking particularly about the people of the church that would take those traits which is even scarier the reason why i say that is because when you go to um verse five okay i'm gonna read from verse four at first it says traitors headstrong haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying its power who will want to have a form of godliness? Now the world does not care. The world is proudly open to say we are godless. We don't want to do anything with God. But who are those that will have a, an appearance of godliness if not the people of the church that want to appear godly but then on the inside they're denying God's power. So that's why I believe here he's not talking about the world but he's talking about the people within the church. And like I say this is even scarier that the people of the church will become this way they will manifest this trait. So Paul is saying that people will be unthankful. Now, I don't want us to see this unthankful, like, oh, so that means that whenever someone gives me something, I always have to remember to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, because that's easy. It's easy to say thank you when someone gives something to you. It's easy to say thank you when, you know, uh, you have, you know, someone has helped you, you know, lift up something, move out. You no, know, it's easy. It comes naturally to say thank you. But I want to look at the other aspect of thank you that we don't really think about that saying thank you to god to our heavenly father even when it is not convenient to us now it's easy to say thank you to god when he gives us what we want thank you so much father god for answering my prayers thank you so much father god for showing yourself for helping me pass my exam thank you so much father god for giving me admission to this university. Thank you so much. That's easy. But the greatest and biggest challenge is to say thank you to God, to show gratefulness to God, even when His ways are not our ways. And definitely, ladies, what I'm going to talk to you about is what I am going through. And I've been going through this for a couple of days now because I'm just learning this as well, that it is important to say thank you to see to show our gratefulness to the Lord regardless now it's difficult and I found it so difficult myself to say thank you to the Lord when circumstances are not working for me like I've been praying to the Lord and I've been asking father God please reveal your will let me do this I'm asking for your will and the Lord says no or he says not yet and I'm like but when do you want to do this I mean is it when I die that this is going to happen so it's like I've been frustrated you know it's like I just want these things to happen in my life I just want this and I've been praying for this and this is according to your will why would you not give it to me well, the Lord is not his ways are not my ways and it's very difficult to that at the end of the day you still have to say thank you Lord in everything now why is it important to say thank you to the Lord why is it important to show our gratefulness to the Lord well because first of all um it is the will of God. That's his will for us. Now, many of us, we're always like, oh, I want to know what God's will for my life. You know, people in university, they say, I want to know what's my purpose in life. What's my, what's, what does God want me to do? What is God's will for my life? Well, let's find out. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, the Bible could have just said, in everything give thanks okay that's fine we move on to the next verse but it says for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you so let's not even start thinking about the big will that God has for us oh what's God what does God want me to do in life what's my purpose in life let's start with the elementary lessons the Bible doesn't say for everything give thanks but it says in everything in every situation you're going through whether sad 
happy, give thanks. Father God, I am thankful. Even if I didn't get the promotion, I'm thankful because you are in control. Father God, I'm thankful that even if this sad news happened, I got this sad news, I'm thankful because you are still God and you will not leave me alone. This is the kind of thankfulness that God wants us to have. And I'm telling you, ladies, it is very difficult because thankfulness is not just saying thank you. It's also living it out saying thank you in our lives because it's one thing to say father god i'm thank you i'm thankful so much because you know even though you didn't give me what i wanted i'm thankful that you are in control but then if you you know if moments after you start complaining about the same thing then you're not thankful so thankful thankful thankfulness is more than just saying thank you with your words but it's also living it out and thankful means you're not whining, you're not complaining, you're not depressed, you're not sad, you're not worried. Um, that's what thankful, a thankful spirit is about. And I said earlier that the reason why we need to be thankful is because first, it's God's will for us, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And in Psalm chapter 50, we see another reason why it's important to say thank you. And I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. It says, Psalm 50, verse 23. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. In the New King James Version, it says, Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him... And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. So one version is saying whoever offers praise and another one is, talks about just offers a sacrifice of thanks. Praising God is a way of manifesting that life of thankfulness. Because you cannot praise God if you have, you know, so much bitterness in your heart you cannot praise god if you are ungrateful but praising god living that life when you praise god it's you're happy you are content you are satisfied and you are at peace and god says here that when we give a sacrifice of thanks it honors him but also look at the last part it says i will reveal to you the salvation of god the blessings of God cannot pour down on us when we are ungrateful. The blessings of God cannot pour down on our life when we are, you know, whining. But when we are grateful, when we are thankful to the Lord for everything, in everything, when we are praising the Lord with our lives, we're praising the Lord with our songs, that's when the, the Lord will usher His blessing upon us. And a great example for that is um, the life of Joseph is so commendable. Joseph... So Joseph has been sold by his brother as a slave and he's taken to a foreign land and he's working there as a slave. And the word of God says in Genesis 39 verse 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. So Joseph, so his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Verse 5, so it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Now, if um, Joseph had gone to Potiphar's house and started just being lazy, you know, I don't want to be a slave in this person's house. I miss my father. I miss my little brother. I don't want to be here. If he was just being lazy and productive and just being a burden, uh, no way would the Lord have blessed him. And it specifically says that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. So Joseph, he was even promoted because it, verse 5 said that he was... Uh, made an overseer of the house of the Egyptian and all that he had. I mean, you're not going to be promoted when you're lazy. You're not going to be promoted when you spend all your time complaining. But you're only promoted when you show great and hard work. And that was Joseph's example. And so we see here when, you know, someone like Joseph, you're sold as a slave, but you don't 
see your condition and you're going to a foreign land and you're working hard and you're very positive that's a lesson for us ladies that's a great lesson for us if someone like that could take someone very bitter negative that happened to him and turn it around by becoming thankful by becoming productive at work by becoming submissive to his master it tells us that also when we are going through difficult times when we are going through challenging times when we are going through the persecution we can do it the same power that allowed joseph to be positive and to be um, a hard-working man to be thankful the same power can also help us even in our times of deep need and deep trouble to still have that spirit of thankfulness to still praise the Lord and when we do so God ushers his blessing upon us um, another example that is contrary to that we have Saul King Saul of Israel if we see in first uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18 now when Saul became uh, was a king he was very he became very jealous of David and so this is when David had conquered uh, the Philistine and especially when he had defeated Goliath so the women verse 7 so the women sang and as they danced and said Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands Verse 8, Then Saul was very angry, and the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousand, and to me they have ascribed only thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day forward, and it happened on the day next, sorry, and it happened on the next day that the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul. Other translations say that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he began to rave in his house like a mad man. So we see here because Saul, you know, instead of being grateful, Father God, I'm grateful that you use David to help us defeat the Philistine. I'm thankful that you used this young man to come and deliver us from the hands of the Philistine. But he was very angry. He became angry like, who is he? Just a small boy like that, he wants to overtake me? No, no, this is not going to happen. And because he was so filled with anger and he was just bitter and he was just angry of this, you know, at this situation. Next thing that happens is that the very next day, an evil spirit, a tormenting spirit came upon him and he began to rave in his house like a madman. Now, I know that previously that evil spirit had been upon him before, but I think that even now, the, the urge of that evil spirit was greater because of what Saul was feeling in his heart. If Saul was happy, let's say, for example, if Saul was, if Saul was happy that David had conquered the Philistine. If he was thankful and saying, oh, praise the Lord, we have defeated the Philistine, God has used David. Do you think that evil spirit would have come upon Saul? Absolutely not, because he would have been in a, in a state of praise. But the evil spirit, the tormenting spirit, even rushed in, in Saul's body when he saw that he was filled with anger filled with bitterness, filled with so much rage. So this is just to tell us that having um, a thankful spirit is important because we usher God's blessing upon us. And when we do not do that, when we fall into depression, when we fall into discouragement and we want to be to abandon, it's like we're opening the door to the devil to come into our life and just, you know, damage us. And this, I mean, I'm sure you probably may have heard that or may have seen that people that fell into depression and it just went, you know, worse and worse and worse unless God intervened. So it's never for our, uh, for our benefit when we are unthankful, when we are ungrateful before the Lord. I guess the real question will be, how do you give thanks to God? How do you even begin to praise God when you don't feel like doing it? How do you begin to live out a life of praise when there are absolutely no reasons for you to do it? I mean, just like I was saying, you're going through a period of hopelessness. You're going through a period where you think like none of your prayers are being answered when 
you know so many challenges you're facing so many challenges financial challenges academic challenges you know you're scared and you're filled with so much trauma it's like how in the world do you even begin to say thank you or to even live out a life of thankfulness and what i've learned and i'm learning to do right now these days is sing sing songs of praises to the lord and ladies it works now when I'm saying when I'm saying sing, um, I'm not telling you I'm not saying sing just any Christian songs because there are Christian songs that are out there that are really not inspired, have no Bible, they're not biblically based. But take a song, sing a song that you know that is really based on the word of God. No, it praises the Lord. It lifts up the name of the Lord. You know, if you can play the music on your phone or radio or whatnot on your laptop, do it. If not, do it inwardly. Sometimes when I wash the dishes, I do the dishes, I feel like, you know, if there's a problem going on and I feel like I want to complain and I want to be so discouraged right there the Holy Spirit tells me sing and so I begin to sing inwardly you know I'm washing the dishes but in my in my heart I'm I'm singing and I'm telling you ladies it works the more you sing the more I sing the calmer I become the more I sing the more peaceful I become the more I sing the more joyful I become, the more I sing, the more at rest I become. And it's such a powerful tool to sing praises to the Lord. And then the rest will follow. The rest will follow meaning that the Holy Spirit will help you to say thank you. The Holy Spirit will help you to live a life of thankfulness, to not complain throughout the day. And you know, whenever there's that urge, you feel like you want to complain and you want to get angry, sing. Sing inwardly, sing outwardly, whatever you have to do, sing songs of praise. And one of the passage that um, I've discovered is Psalm chapter eight, verse two, which says, you have taught, so God has taught, you have taught children and infants to give you praise, silencing your enemies, and all who oppose you. I know there are other translations that say you have taught children and infants to tell of your strength. So whatever you're telling of God's strength, you're praising God, you know, you're elevating his name. So you're singing to the Lord is powerful. Praising the Lord is powerful because that's the way we silence the enemy. That's the way we drive away the enemy. And I've had many testimony, I've heard many testimony of people that say, you know what, whenever I feel like that spirit of bitterness wants to come in me, whenever I feel like I want to get so upset because of something, I just begin to sing. Even if I don't feel like it, I just begin to sing. Right there, I begin to sing. And the more I sing, the better I become. And it works everything just fall back into place and I feel so much peace and I feel so much calm and and I am just like okay you know what God is in control so that's something I would highly recommend you ladies to do it's not hard it's not difficult sing songs of praise you know out of the out of a sincere heart just sing song of praise to the Lord whether so ladies there you have it let's start with the basics when it comes to our relationship with the Lord by saying thank you and like I say here I'm not saying you know the regular thank you oh thank you so much for opening the door for me but the greatest challenge and biggest challenge is to say thank you to the Lord in every circumstance because he himself says that this is his will for us so the basic lesson for us who want to do the will of God let's learn by being grateful to the Lord in everything being grateful is not just verbally but it's also in the way that we live in our daily lives not complaining not you know whining not you know being angry and upset about the situation but in everything we need to learn to just say thank you to the Lord in everything and I know things are very difficult things are difficult in your life things are difficult in my life but we need to cling to God because this is the way we need to cling to God especially when the devil sees the light of God in us when he sees that light he will do everything in his power to discourage our faith to to decrease our zeal for the Lord to make us 
you know, not worship the Lord like we used to because he really wants us to, he really wants to separate us away from the Lord. But when we learn to just make baby steps, you know, like I said, by begin to just sing, sing good Christian songs, sing great inspired hymns, and you will see that the more you do it, the more the Holy Spirit will help you. And when we praise the Lord, we drive out the devil, we drive out those demonic spirits, we silence our enemies. And when we praise the Lord, when we just have that attitude of thankfulness, we are calling upon the blessings of the Lord. The Lord will openly bless us compared to when we are bitter, when we are just mad and we're just... Uh, not satisfied about the way things are going. I uh, just want to end with prayer and praying a prayer of uh, just courage and strength for you ladies. Father oh God, we bless you. We thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to come back and speak to the, the sisters and just speak this word that you have been teaching me as well in my, in my study, in my study of the Bible, Father God. I thank you. I thank you for all the sisters that are back to school. I thank you for watching over them, for giving them strength, Lord. The Bible tells us about those perilous times, Lord, that are coming, those difficult times. And even now, we are living those difficult times, those last days when everything is just difficult. I mean, I experience that in my daily lives. Things are so hard and I'm begging and I'm praying for deliverance, but you're not answering yet because it's not according to your will and i'm sure for the ladies for the sisters out there they are going through similar things lord where they are you know there's no hope it feels like there's no hope it feels like they're so overwhelmed it feels like it feels like they're so discouraged and so tired and so so angry so many things are going on you know their lives lord father god i pray that you'll help them I pray that the Holy Spirit will help them, will strengthen them to be strong and courageous, Lord, to keep their eyes on Jesus, to learn to be thankful in every, in everything, in all circumstances, to sing praises to you, Lord, even if they don't feel like it, but it's just easy to begin one word, two words, and begin singing songs of praise to you so that you will, they will just usher that spirit of thankfulness, usher that spirit of praise in their lives so that you would be willing to bless them even the more willing to give them peace give them joy give them love give them comfort oh lord that you will pour out those blessings upon them oh lord that they'll be strong in the lord in jesus name oh god destroy every demonic spirit that are attacking their lives attacking their spiritual life attacking their health everything that the devil has in plan lord we destroy in jesus name your words say that although our enemies plot evil against us, they shall not succeed in Jesus' name. So your, their enemies will not succeed in Jesus' name, I declare. Their enemies will not succeed. They will come against them one way, but they will flee before them seven ways in Jesus' name. Oh God, we give you glory, we give you praise. Help us to always continue, Lord, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the offer and finisher of our faith. We praise you, Lord, and we say thank you to you, Lord, in everything. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Stay blessed.